What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another Daily Drop brought to you by TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm Jacob Turner. He's Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here to talk about RJ Davis. And um, we hit on it a little bit in the UNC basketball show that came out earlier this week. So go listen to that when you get a chance after this video is done, of course. But I know you've got a bunch of numbers to throw at RJ. Well, we're going to talk about kind of the RJ Davis effect right now and maybe how teams are playing him a little bit differently, playing him a little more physically. And also some of the shooting struggles that maybe he's had recently, not just struggles, but the amount of shots he's putting up and the effect that maybe that's having on the rest of the team. So just to throw a couple numbers at you before you dive into the nitty gritty of it. 23 of 60 from the floor in the last three games. He's never had a three game stretch with 60 shots before as well. And I think this was even more of an, a, the more maybe even glaring stat from looking at, at some of these numbers that you have 13 of 37 inside the arc, which is almost hard to believe when you think of RJ. Cause one of the things that I've been more impressed with with RJ this year, I mean, for tweeting it out a couple of games ago of man, RJ Davis's floater game is just, it's immaculate to look at at times hasn't really been the same in the last few games when you consider the fact that he's just 13 from 37 when he's inside the arc. So a lot of different things to talk about with RJ. And I think the message in the pot, the basketball show we did earlier this week was, I don't know if over is the right word, but because other guys on the team maybe aren't shooting as well, he, it seems like he's feeling the need to put up more shot attempts. And we've talked about how that's not necessarily a positive for this team. You don't want to be over reliant on one guy. That's yeah. not how you win games in March when it really matters. So talk to me a little bit about, RJ Davis and maybe some of the struggles that he's having right now and how that kind of translates and, and feeds into the, the team as a whole. There are multiple prongs to this topic. One is, as you said, and we kind of hit on it a few weeks ago for at, at, at first saying that you know, there's a risk of the team becoming overly reliant on RJ. Mm -hmm. And the second stage of that is RJ becoming over, overly reliant on RJ, meaning that, he starts losing a little faith in some other guys to convert off of looks and well, I, I'm, it's better that I take the shot now. And it's not a, I'm going to get mine kind of thing. It's not a look at me thing. It's not a ball hog thing. It's trying to do what he thinks is best for the team and having the kind of year he's had, I could see where he would have that kind of confidence. However, teams are defending him differently. They're being, they are much more physical with him now of late than they were previously. Georgia tech started that RJ had went for 28, but he was 11 for 24 from the floor, took some tough shots. Then Duke was really physical with them. Face guarded him. RJ attempted only three threes against Duke. Mm -hmm. So Duke took that away from him, forced RJ to get into the lane. He was getting whacked and falling to the floor all the time. And then Clemson took a lot of stuff away too from RJ and was very physical with him. He's hit the floor a ton the last few games. And I think he, I think he might be getting tired. He's getting yeah. worn. This, this club could use an open date right now. And it's still a couple more weeks before they get it, but they could use an open date right now. And RJ's had to carry a lot of the load. The other thing was just the wear and tear and having to be the guy having to make so many. I've said for a while they needed a third score. And then there was that stretch where they weren't feeding Armando the ball. Armando was getting dumped on by people, but he attempted 24 shots in that four game stretch. He scored 29 points. And I've said a big man cannot give himself an entry pass. They need to get him the ball too and take some of that load off of RJ. They've done it the last two games, but the perimeter struggle is still what it is. Cormac's not hitting. Nobody is going to guard Elliot Cadeau unless he drives now. I mean, they are telling him, go ahead and shoot from out there. Elliot hasn't hit a shot from outside the lane, I think, since December. And that's a problem. That's something they're now going to just sit back and say, well, we're going to drop back. We're going to take away Elliot's drive, and we're going to force him to shoot a jumper. He has to shoot it if he's wide open, because for this team to be what it can be in March, he has to make some of those. He has to show that he can make it and force yep. defenses to be a little bit more honest. But until he does, that's what teams are going to do. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the effect of all of this on RJ is really showing right now that teams are like, look, you stop that guy. You turn him into seven for 22 like Tuesday night, then that's somewhat like cutting the head off the snake. He scored 22 points, but it was not an efficient 22. It wasn't a pretty 22. Uh, it wasn't a 22 that helped Carolina win a game. 
he scored 22 points because he put up 22 shots. And this is not a criticism of RJ. I think this is all a byproduct of some of the issues that this team has right now. So to fix it, they need Cormac to start hitting shots. Sounds mm-hmm. simple, but he's got to knock them down. I think, as we said in the basketball show, Harrison needs to be more aggressive. He needs to be more assertive and shoot more. He needs to be less unselfish and shoot the ball more because that's better for this team. And of course, perhaps you have more combinations out there with different guys in RJ because teams are guarding him away from the ball so far and they're bumping him a lot. Maybe putting the ball back in his hands more will keep teams from doing that because they can't, they can't bump him when he has the ball because that's going to be a foul and it's, it's going to be pretty obvious. A lot of times he's fouled cutting, trying to get open and it's just not seen. And in the wear, there's a wear and tear factor there. Plus Elliot's not producing again. He's kind of gone into one of those stretches. So Mm -hmm. maybe a way to offset this is to get the ball in his hands a little bit more, get Seth on the court when Seth's healthy again, that gives them a little bit more defense. They get into transition a little bit more, when they're in transition more, they score more. They have a higher offensive efficiency because those are easier baskets. And RJ can finish in transition. And if he gets fouled, he goes to the line. So I, I think maybe you see some of that stuff moving forward. But uh, the RJ factor that I would be highly concerned about if I was a Carolina fan is, A, he's getting tired. B, he's starting to think that he has to do too much. And C, the wear and tear effect on all of this. Because we're seeing at the free throw line. He's the all-time leader in free throws in North Carolina history, and he's missed a free throw in each of the last six games, and he missed two against Duke, or excuse me, against Clemson. The last time he missed two in a game was the home loss last season to Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. So they need to fix this. They need to get it. It's not just a simple matter of switching on defense, and they need to do a better job in the defensive glass. They RJ needs to get back to where he was, being more efficient. He needs to do. He needs to hit in the low twenties. Taking 14, 15 shots, not 22. Yeah. That's I completely- that to me is probably that to me is the biggest key for this team moving forward. And that requires a third scorer stepping up. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It over reliance is the word that pops on it. And I'm glad you said it a second ago. It's more of a recent trend because if you look at the game logs for RJ, the Carolinas played 23 games this season. In five, three of the last five games, RJ's attempted 22 or more shots. And before that stretch, AJ, you have to go all the way back to the Villanova game, another loss for North Carolina, where R.J. Davis Overtime. attempted 22 shots. He hadn't even attempted more than 20 since that Villanova game. Um, yeah. it, it, between the Villanova game, excuse me, and the um, Wake Forest game being the other one where he attempted 23. So you're looking at that stretch of five games where 22 shot attempts against Clemson, it's a loss. 24 shot attempts yeah. against Georgia Tech. It's a loss. The other game being 23 shot attempts in Wake Forest, a game in which Wake uh, against uh, a game in which Carolina ended up winning. But two of those three games, where he's attempted 22 or more yeah. shots in the last five games. Carolina's lost those games. So again, it's an emerging trend that's happened recently, and it we're seeing with these stats, AJ, that well, it's kind of a recipe for disaster for Carolina because if yeah, you're looking is. at these games, four games, RJ, this season, it's is attempted 22 or more shots. Carolina's lost three of those four. It, that's it right there. That's all you need well, to do. And the one that they won, he mm-hmm. was on total fire and scored 36. Oh, yeah. So he kept shooting because he was feeling it so much. He was hot. And that, yeah. you can excuse that. And the Villanova game, he was at, what, 22 in that game? Well, that yep. game went to overtime, and mm-hmm. Cormac got hurt at the end of regulation, so they needed RJ to put up a lot of shots in that mm-hmm. overtime period. And they fell behind right away, so he had to take a lot of threes and drive and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is this is they, this is they a trend now, I think. It's a short trend, but it's enough of a trend, given the fact they've lost two of these three to teams with, that came in with, with losing records in the ACC. Mm-hmm. So, And one was at home. The Georgia Tech team, by the way, has lost 11 of its last 13. Yeah, not one great. of the wins is over Carolina. Not and great. Georgia Tech, did you, did you see Damon Stoudemire's post-game press conference the other night? No, I didn't. What, what did he say? Look at the – watch the beginning of his press conference. I will. I'll go back and watch that. We got that ass whooped. That's what he said. <laughs> so – I love that. You know, since Georgia Tech beat Carolina, they lose to state and then they get blown out again. And they get blown out. Sounds about so, right. 
So this they need to fix this. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it takes the other guys to fix it. There's only so much RJ can do. We've seen that. He's the mm-hmm. ACC player of the year if the season ended right now. But the other guys need to step up. I'm telling you that I've said for a few weeks they need a third score. And now it's reached critical a critical point where a third score needs to step up. It's February 7th when we're recording this. You got a month left in the regular season. You have to become who you're going to be at this stage. And right now they don't have that third score. And the second score is only done at the last two games. So I don't think this team has weaknesses because I think all this, all that stuff is there. They just yeah. have to bring it out. They have to mm-hmm. squeeze a third score out. Because mm-hmm. I think Armando, the emphasis on getting him the ball is there again, and that's good because Armando showed – against Clemson, he can be extremely efficient around the basket. And he is so much quicker and more decisive with his moves and and smoother and more direct with his moves than he's been at any time previously in his career. So there's your second score. But they need the third one. It has to be Harrison. Harrison Ingram stepping up, being more yeah. assertive, being less unselfish will actually help RJ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. It, it, I think the main message of this of this drop is – an over-reliance on RJ is provably not a recipe for success for this North Carolina team. Just yeah, look at the stats. Just look at the box scores. It's just not, it's got to change. Recipe for, that's recipe for a second round loss. Exactly. It's got to change, but I, it's in on a positive. Like you just mentioned, I think Carolina has the ability. It's not like you're looking at the rest of the team. Like, well, I don't know where it comes from. It can come from quarterback. It can come from Ingram. We've seen it. It just has to happen on a more consistent basis because it, it, it isn't happening enough right now. So, We'll see. AJ, maybe it starts in Coral Gables on Saturday. Who knows? I mean, that could we'll be see. the perfect opportunity. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there. Looking forward to it. Talk to the yeah, guys man. afterwards. We we have we go over where the Tar Heels go. If you're if you don't know about our website, tarheelstrade.com, yep. we absolutely crush it with mm-hmm. content. There's a reason I leave the arena at 4 30 in the morning, guys. It's because I'm grinding out all kinds of of noteworthy, as Jacob calls it, meat. Yeah. And the tidbits and the takeaways that give you guys a much fuller, deeper view of what's going on. So head over there and become a member of our community. It doesn't Agreed. cost us to drop in the bucket. Link in the description below, man. Like I always say, it's it's about buying a beer for us a month right now. Eight thirty three a month. Heck, I mean, it you is. go get a craft yeah. beer. It's about seven dollars nowadays. So think of it as yeah. a is a pint for me and AJ to to split because we can't even get two for that price right now. So yeah. well, yeah. Plus, you know, as I get older, that would be enough to, you know. So yeah. <laughs> But that's yeah, what keeps yeah. us going, guys. That's what keeps us absolutely. going. This is a business as well. Mm-hmm. This is a high journalistic standards, but it's also a business. And, and we have to pay for me to get down to Coral Gables. So we have to pay for I have to pay for Jacob, man. Jacob commands such a <laughs> Bobby Witt Jr. just got a 10 year, $289 million contract. And I was like, he's got nothing on Jacob Turner. <laughs> Hey, come on, help me out, guys. Help me out, guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a little pay increase every year. The more people who signed he, up, he, even though would... even though Carly said I do, he's still trying to impress her. Hey man, you know how I do. AJ, I gotta I gotta I gotta try to get it get it where I can, you know what I mean? So the more more people that sign up, here's the main message. The more money I could potentially get at the end of the year. So help me out a little bit, guys. I have to think about it anyway like that. But no, seriously, I always say this, AJ. The more people that sign up on our website, the more we can do on every platform, including YouTube. So the more content you guys are going to end up getting, everybody wins in that situation. So yeah, go ahead and sign up links in the description below, head on over to tarhillillustrated.com. Just eight 33 a month. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones, another episode of the daily drop. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Again, if you haven't seen the UNC basketball show, we put out on Wednesday evening, go check that out after this, give that a listen. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe as well. Cause AJ will be down in Coral Gables on Saturday for Carolina's next matchup with Miami. Like, share, hit that notification bell too. See y'all next time. Thanks. Thanks.